so my name is Juanice Moore. I am a licensed professional counselor in the state of Georgia, as well as a life coach um, and a mom. And as you can see, we have a black woman. And Miss Lita, can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Yes, beautiful black woman. Um, <laughs> I am a <laughs> I am a microblading and makeup artist. I've been in the beauty industry for over 10 years. I started doing makeup way back in um, high school, started doing other people's makeup. Um, but I started wearing it in middle school, which is, you know, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so women, women in beauty have been my business for a long time. Okay, cool. Um, Therapy, I've been in school, I feel like, forever. I've always been the why child. But why? But why? But why? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so with that, trying to understand why, <clears throat> it was either be a, um, an attorney, because I was really good at arguing with my brothers, or be a therapist. So I chose mm -hmm. the latter. Mm -hmm. So I am here today. Yeah. I am yeah. a therapist. And I actually love what I do. I could use somebody like Lita. I don't do a whole lot of makeup, put on lipstick and mm -hmm. eyeliner, and I keep it moving. But um, mm -hmm. nonetheless, that's why we're here. We're here discussing how yes. beauty impacts us as women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll let yes. Lita start. This was her idea for having this collaboration. I think it's a great idea. So I'll let Lita start. Mm -hmm. So we're in the same um, coaching group. And um, I always get excited in the company of therapists because I love to read so much about psychology. Mm -hmm. And um, when it came up to collaborate with each other, you know, it was a no brainer for me. Um, I have a cultural empowerment enterprise where I teach women of African descent mm -hmm. the ancient tradition of head wrapping. So I use that as a platform to create discussion around basically this, as being black, as being women, how we feel about our, um, what our self, the condition of our self image, how we got to that point and all those things. And, you know, we end up having sister girl time and realizing we're not alone in how we're feeling. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Um, my, my idea of beauty, which I've noticed we we pick up our our um concepts of beauty from our mother the women in our the women in our family so most likely if a woman wears makeup it's because her mother wore makeup if a mother if a woman does not know anything about makeup does not care about it then it's usually the same thing for her for her mother and she picked up the same ideals um, i can agree with that you know Definitely in my yeah 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 <laughs> see and so when i grew up my mom was selling mary Kay, and that's back in the fashion fair days right so she had her big her big yes her big eyeshadow palette and <laughs> i would just sit in the bathroom and watch her do her makeup so i learned what went where at a really young age nice and of course you know when she went to work i started playing the makeup mm -hmm. at a young age too um and then um, looking back, like in retrospect, I realized how much of the unsaid things I picked up from her self-image, mm -hmm. the holes in her self-confidence. Like what? Um, her, her body image. So gotcha. I was blessed to have my mom's almost exact shape. Okay. So, you know, we see, I'm, I'm going to, you can correct me at any point because I'm going to speak like I know what I'm talking about. So we see, <laughs> we see ourselves through the eyes of our mother. Mm -hmm. We see our body through the eyes of our mother looking in the mirror at herself. And so that's what I do. So before I even probably needed a bra, I thought that I needed bigger boobs, you know? Ah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I never, I remember as a child, I was never, um, slim enough as a child mm -hmm. i was never but i was never chubby ever right so i picked it up though i picked mm -hmm. it up it's i don't it was probably said it was probably um spoken i don't know in passing to herself mm -hmm. or maybe to her friends to my 
<clears throat> mom's friends. Um, but I remember picking that up. And so later on, that ended up being my work that I have to do on myself. Mm -hmm. I have a son. I don't have a daughter yet. But I don't, that's not what I want to pass down. I want to give her right. the opposite. I want to give her a leg up in that. And um, I see that it affects how we interact with each other as grown women. Because mm -hmm. we, we bring our insecurities to that too. What do you have to say? I agree with you in that we, we do bring our insecurities about ourselves into our relationships um, with other women and men. Um, I agree about the makeup. My mom, my mother, she made me sick with her flawless skin. Like I had never seen a pimple on this woman's face ever. <laughs> wow. Ever. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I had the pimply face, you know, wow. high school experience. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, how? But why? I don't get this. Right. But right. so anyway, the, right. the not wearing makeup, definitely that would come from her. And whenever I try to wear makeup, I just feel like I look like a clown. So I don't do it all. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's an image thing I need to work on. I do like lipstick, though. Uh, lipstick and she awesome. wore lipstick. You're making mm -hmm. me think now, Lita. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I've lipstick. observed. I've observed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I do think, though, I was, I was a tomboy growing up. So I think <clears throat> that image, my mother, I was, I'm the only girl. So that mm -hmm. image of my mother, only lipstick on church Sundays, really. And <laughs> then seeing my brothers, subsequently, I was very athletic, mm -hmm. tomboyish. Mm -hmm. Um, the hair has always been, that's something we're going to get into, I think later, but I have yeah. this, my parents are black, but there's mixed heritage. So I'm the like dark skinned chick with the curly mm -hmm. hair, kind of mm -hmm. sort of frizzy. What do you do with it? I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's cooperating today. Sometimes I get a Woody mm -hmm. Allen look. I'm not Jew. I don't know. Okay, but that's a hair thing, so I really didn't <laughs> deal with it. My grandmother knew I didn't know what it is, so she kept it braided for me, um, which was great. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I think I got some of my image from the male influence just because there was mm -hmm. so much of it growing mm -hmm. up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It wasn't good because they were my brothers, right? Mm -hmm. So there was the right, taunting right. and the picking and the name calling, mm -hmm. and it turned into mm -hmm. this thing I still have anything you can do, I mm -hmm. can do better, like female to male. Um, mm -hmm. but, but physically, I like my body athletic. My mother mm -hmm. was a heavier woman. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I got mm -hmm. the athleticism more from just mm -hmm. how I experienced my life growing up. And I actually mm -hmm. like my body that way. So, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable when I'm that way. So body image, I didn't have the issues there bras mm -hmm. i didn't want to wear them because my brothers didn't wear bras you know so <laughs> what is this Aww. about yeah. <laughs> well i fought that one what about that long and hard i fought that battle long and hard um <laughs> but that you know i grew up in the country too dirt road on the farm yeah so i'm sure that has something to do with it as well um but back oh, yeah 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 back to beauty and that that self-esteem um i will say that you know for me it really wasn't mm -hmm. there i really didn't have a concept or understand what it was to be to have self-esteem or to feel pretty um i think we talked about that in our pre-conversation like growing up feeling a certain way the trauma you know of beauty mm -hmm. growing up right um, am I pretty? Mm -hmm. And then during mm -hmm. the 70s is when I grew up. So there was this whole light skin, dark skin thing. And I kind of hung out closer to the, you know, the dark skin chick. So I'm like, well, am I not pretty because mm -hmm. my skin is darker? And then you go through this mm -hmm. whole thought of lightening your skin and mm -hmm negative you don't want to you know go anywhere you don't want to go to prom you don't want to go to social events because you're not as pretty wow right wow as your light skin yeah. counterparts even relatives because yeah. in my family there's a myriad there's mm. freckles mm. and green eyes you know mm. and then there's darker than me so we we kind of run the gamut 
Yeah. Within each other, we never saw a difference, right? We never, so the light skinned cousins never really kind of made you feel shady because you weren't light skinned. <laughs> but there was some unspoken stuff yeah. in society during that time that I think a lot of people, I'm loving when I see today darker skinned sisters, yes. lighter skinned sisters too, but yes. we, we had that struggle of feeling accepted and pretty. Yeah. And yeah. there was a societal, almost like a definition of pretty that equated to fair skin. And yeah. that was considered exotic. It was interesting. Right. It was interesting. I'm, I'm, so I'm really happy to see that we're pulling away from that now. And that of all yeah. shades and colors, we're all accepting our own personal yeah, beauty. I and it's, right. Yeah. I think we kind of are like creating our own mm-hmm. standard of beauty today. Which is what which is what we need to do because we're the ones in the skin and it's right. us and the ones that look like us. So why do we buy into besides being brainwashed and being too lazy to stop, think about and question the um the images that are being fed to us? Um mm-hmm. I think that I think that we should um it takes a certain amount of strength. You know, to look yourself right. in the mirror and say, no matter what I see, I'm going to love it. Right. It does. Especially with the feeling that we as women go through from prepubescence all the way up through um, post-motherhood or during right. motherhood, I should say. Right. There's a lot of different phases, a lot of body changes, a lot of, mm-hmm. um, you know, changes in how we want to, like we test out how we want to show up in the world as far as aesthetics right right There's i was a lot talking there. to somebody today mean. about that post motherhood mm-hmm. and i'm mm-hmm. not where i used to be i'm not who i used to be i don't feel like myself you know mm-hmm. um exactly. when you have a baby it, it takes right. over right um yes but so that goes back to that conversation around like you were just saying around self-esteem and looking yourself in the mirror and saying I got it regardless. All right. Um, Yeah. And that's, that's what helps. I think finally we got there and I think I'm reading this book. Leah is so good. I kept hearing about this and talking about it. It's called post-traumatic slave syndrome. And when I think about, when you think about (laughs) how we interact um, with each other, and I'm speaking of black women, yes. black people, our right. relationships, right. whether it's our relationship with money, our relationship mm-hmm. with each other, yeah. um, within family units and friends and yeah. all, you know, all kinds of, it impacts everything. So that book is so insightful. But it does. when we Food. talk about this complexion thing, I think that goes back to yeah. the slave in the house, right? Mm-hmm. who got to be in the house and who was out in the field mm-hmm. and who was deemed mm-hmm. to be a more worthy person mm-hmm. based on complexion. Who, who was deemed to be a more, a more worthy human being mm-hmm. or to be more closely treated like a human? That's <laughs> deep. And, is, and uh-huh. DNA is, is memory. So that memory is passed on and passed on and passed on. And I think that a lot of times little dark skinned girls don't even know why they don't feel beautiful. Right. My niece is brown skin. She's not even considered dark, but she went through that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Not that, then, not that, not that it would be more plausible if she were, but right. she went through that whole thing. And I was like, who's, who's telling this to you? And it was because she was being taunted by little white boys in their school. But mm-hmm. I try, so I, so I, I would do these things where I would take her to the mirror and make her say she was beautiful. But it wouldn't go through. It it didn't translate. It never like she never could keep the eye contact. Mm-hmm. You know, she was little. Mm-hmm. She was probably like nine at the time. Yeah. You yeah. know, it starts so young. I think um, we need to put yeah. more emphasis on building their um, building their mindset around their body, around their self image. Mm-hmm. While as soon as they can talk, exactly. Not not when they get to middle school. Not when they're about to go to college. Right. But as soon as they can talk, tell them why they're beautiful no matter what. Not just that you're pretty or you look cute in that dress. Mm-hmm. 
Uh -huh. You're beautiful. And can we you stop mean, with the, oh, you're such a cute little chocolate girl. Can we stop mm, for the dark skin yeah. sisters everywhere? <laughs> you're so pretty and chocolate. Can we just, you know, mm -hmm. can we not do That's that? a new way to say pretty for you, a dark you're skin. You're pretty girl. for a dark skin girl. That's the new way to say that, huh? It ain't new. It's old, baby. It's been around forever. <laughs> Can we stop with that? Because even that statement, it says so much, even though it just, yeah, it's just a few words, it says so much. Oh, yeah. because dark skinned chocolate girls typically aren't pretty, but I am. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. I self hate my color? It, right. it, gets, it gets so deep. Right. So don't, don't say that. I'm a word person. Don't, don't say that to anybody. Look, is she pretty? She no pretty. Message. Yeah, message. it's messaging. Matter of fact, it's I'm sure messaging. I'm sure I'm guilty of of saying that because mm -hmm. excuse me, both of my nieces are dark chocolate and beautiful, mm -hmm. but they're babies. So I right. won't be I won't be I won't be delivering that message to them. <laughs> Things get picked up. Things get picked up by us yeah. in our subconscious. And we don't know when they're gonna surface. We don't. We don't because it's like we're programmed on that. Yeah. Okay. We we going into to that psychology stuff which okay. I can go okay. into all day. Me too. Me too. Okay. That's so so okay. but the, it does talk about that. I mean, we were talking about that emotional impact because emotionally mm -hmm. that pretty little chocolate girl can grow up, right, and think, mm -hmm. okay, well, because I'm pretty, mm -hmm. I really shouldn't hang with the other dark skin, mm. chocolate people, because wow. I'm pretty, so I need to be over here with the perception, wow. the perceived, beautiful, mm -hmm. pretty, light skin girls. So that turns mm -hmm. into a self-hate thing, and that's when you see the mm -hmm. skin bleaching, and, and they just completely turn away from culture, not mm -hmm. that you have to walk around with the bamboo earrings, but if that's your thing, that's your thing, whether you right. dark, light, whatever. But it, it it's the site it becomes a whole psychological thing and you don't just get to be who you are. Right. 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 That's probably the hardest thing. I think for humans, period. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I don't know if you um subscribe to this uh practice, but I think I know that's why it's so hard for people to meditate mm -hmm. because it requires you to just be. Yes. That's why I wore my head um, bald for so long. I just ended up with a bald head. But once I started walking around like that with confidence, women would come up to me and they would say, you know, that looks good on you. I wish I could yes. do that. And I'd be like, but you can. They'd be but like, I've nah, said that I'm... too. <laughs> See, they'd be like, my head's too big for it. My head is too big. Head... <laughs> I, I think every woman should shave her hair at one point because then it's you and your face. Then it's you right. and you. Yeah. Then you really see you. You get to right. experience yourself all day, every day, and so does the world. And at some point, if you want to, it's, it's going to come up to love or hate. And if you want to get on the other side of that hate, you're going to start loving it. You're going to start loving you. Start loving what you look like and what your features are. Right. And so I, I wore it for a while just so I could have a chance to empower other women like you're nice. beautiful too just to start nice. the conversation we it's, nice. it's something we don't talk about enough like we were saying earlier we see other women through the through the lens of our own insecurities so it's easy for me to look at another woman and be like damn i wish she would put on a spanx she would be cute if she would just do that mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. do you think she's doing something but she right. such and such because that's what i would say if i saw myself in what she has on etc mm -hmm. you know right you're projecting your stuff on her i mm -hmm. went through this exercise in my early 20s i was meeting the same guy short light dark top whatever it was the same guy same issues and i said you know i got to get to know me and that's when i really started to build yeah. build my own self-esteem and boundaries because i found that there were none so mm -hmm. i would kind of you know morph myself into whatever the guy needed me to be even right. though it wasn't necessarily who i was and who right. i was trying to figure out that i wanted to be but in that mm -hmm. process i lost some girlfriends too and it was mm -hmm. interesting because i got this little saying get you a walk they free everybody you know denzel walk in the room you ain't got to see his face you know it's denzel right mm -hmm. get you a walk they free 
that's that builds your confidence. And so I got my little walk together, right? And okay. and I got okay. feeling good about me finally mm -hmm. going through, you know, childhood and puberty and all that crap. And you finally get to, okay, who am I as a woman? And mm -hmm. some of my girlfriends were like, you act like you think you are all that. Mm. And the thing was, I didn't know, I didn't get upset, but the, the conversation became, well, you don't know what I've been through to get me here. Exactly. So my, my, my statement to you is I do think I'm all that, and you should too. And that reminds exactly. me of what you were saying about shaving your head and feeling comfortable with that. You mm -hmm. got to do something to get to that level of comfort you with yourself. You do. And I was like, go get you some. It's out there for everybody. And, and me mm -hmm. feeling like I feel about myself has nothing to do with you. And so when you, right. when we're seeing other people and we're thinking they should spanks or they should put some makeup on or that's not her color, you don't know mm -hmm. what that person went through. Right. Like, right. That has nothing to do with you. Right. Um, my, my, my default conditioning is to see what's wrong. And right. then my retraining says, you don't know her story. There that might go. be literally the best she's ever been able to do in her whole life. And exactly. she's finding her way. Exactly. And that's the case with a lot of people. Like that's why I'm in business. That's why right. people come to get their makeup done. That's why women yes. come to get eyebrows to get their face reframed mm -hmm. so they can have another chance at, at liking what they see in the mirror even more. But isn't, I'm all that about too, that. isn't that about permission to be who you really are as a woman? Absolutely. You know, like getting eyebrows done, that's something. If you weren't in Virginia, I promise I'd come because I've never had eyebrows, right? I'll and be and when we look at ourselves, <laughs> we look at ourselves, <laughs> we don't see, like I get compliments mm -hmm. on my smile. I don't see my smile. I see the fact that I don't have any eyebrows. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we are always, your, most of us. Your smile's outstanding. That's, that's, it's crazy. <laughs> but that's but that's like you were saying the conditioning we're trained yeah. to see yeah. the worst. We are, we are. You know we are. And so, and you know what? Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. So when people compliment us right on whatever, it's like, oh yeah, but I don't have any eyebrows. Yeah, you completely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I and it sounds nice silly when you say it out loud, but we think it over and over every time. I think it. So if we yeah. already got this going on in our minds, and then somebody else comes with their crap at us. Mm -hmm. it exacerbates it mm -hmm. and you know we we don't understand mm -hmm. how much we influence each other we for don't. the good or the bad mm -hmm. we don't understand how much we influence each other and we don't understand how much we can influence each other mm -hmm. sometimes a compliment goes a long way sometimes a compliment will get you through the day because it's it what really you will. needed that day mm -hmm. and so, so I try to um, compliment beauty where I see it, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is everywhere all the time. Oh, but yeah. you know, sometimes you just, you just see a woman and I'm like, I don't think she knows how pretty she is. Mm -hmm. I don't think she understands how gorgeous that hair is, you know? And sometimes I don't because it, we've been conditioned and the times that I don't go up to her and say it, I have a talk with myself. And that's when I get to come and look at myself again and reassess like, so are you jealous? Um, right. Do you not believe that she's beautiful? If you don't really believe she's beautiful, then why is that? Mm -hmm. And then let's go back to that why question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are you jealous? Why do you think, mm -hmm. you know, right. you're not beautiful? Where that but from. is it about right. you? Because it doesn't have right. anything to do with that other sister. It's all, it's you. Right, right, right. Yeah. And if we can just do a little bit of introspection, and figure these things out, we can mm -hmm. get ourselves to a point where we love ourselves enough to mm -hmm. see ourselves in our beauty, and then we can project that beauty onto our sisters and build them up. Yes, absolutely. And, and that beauty, the standards, right? That's something we I wrote down that we were gonna talk about, the standards. And I think we kind of addressed it, like where it comes from. It doesn't come from us, because if we look at the real history, beyond slavery, we were uh, kings and queens just floating around then, right? Right. Without just floating any, around then. <laughs> right? Just being who we were, no permission needed. 
Right. Um, With all our braids and our naps and our um, adornments. Yes. Just being. Yes, just being. So I think that a part of the de- dealing with this beauty thing today, and I'm seeing it and I'm absolutely loving it, is that we're getting back to just being. Yes. You don't have to be comfortable with what I look like because right. you don't know me. I'm com- right. I have to be comfortable with that because I get up with me every day. Yeah. You know, we don't, you know, it's cute in society that I woke up like this. Most of us don't wake up like that. But you still wake up with some kind of beauty that you have within you, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's what makes all that. That's what complements everything else. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can have a great smile but be a jerk. Right. And still ain't nobody going to mess with you. We've seen that on Love & Hip Hop. <laughs> but yes, I heard about it. The show and, and they have the most beautiful women mm-hmm. and they portray them in the light of having the nastiest attitudes so that right. by the end of the show, which I did have to stop watching, but by the end of the show, you don't even, they're beautiful. You don't even see their beauty first anymore. Well, and then who's to say that it's portrayed. beauty though? Who's giving them that definition? And are we perpetuating that? That they're beautiful? Everybody has beauty, but Mm -hmm. who defines beauty? Is beauty long hair, short hair? Right? Oh, I see what you're saying. Who who defines that? I know on the, I used to watch the um, Housewives and I know there was a lot of makeup, a lot of hair, a lot of everything. Access mm-hmm. everything, right? So a lot of everything, a lot of everything yeah. and nobody really seemed yeah. comfortable without all that. It's funny so, that the powers that be, mm-hmm. the ones that control the media mm-hmm. and what's put out in the media are the ones um, that have designed this beauty standard for us. Yes. But in reality, we've always been the beauty standard. Exactly. We've always been the beauty standard. They're still copying us. To this day. To this day. (laughs) Copying us and trying to monopolize, which is a corporation. um, And and I do think that I know that a lot of it is um, the remnants of of the the Willie Lynch Mm -hmm. um, syndrome, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's and, And I think that goes into the whole hair thing, too. Yes. Because the light skin and the looser, straighter hair um, is more associated with the mulattoes, you know, yes. the babies that would have been masses um, denied baby. Yes, you're speaking my language now. <laughs> Just going up into something else. <laughs> oh, this is, my, this is my everyday conversation. With Ooh, me. Okay, we got to do this more often. <laughs> yeah, but. Let's. Yeah. But it's it's so it's so prevalent and it's so um, it is, uh, pervasive today. And we don't even realize how, how it impacts us. Um, and, it, and it goes to self-esteem. So if we're, de- we're dealing with all these things, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm dealing with, you know, you looking at me and saying, oh, why is her hair like that? Why is this? Why that? And then I got family stuff. And then I got stuff from people I'm, you know, as a kid mm-hmm. at school with. People carry that stuff for a long time, right? Oh, yeah. How, how do I develop self-esteem? Because what I think of myself is based on what everybody else is now mm-hmm. saying and has said and has mm-hmm. poured into me. Mm-hmm. And so to dig through all that and figure out what do I think about myself, that's some hard work. It is hard work. It is. It's hard work and it's steady work. Because mm-hmm. like you said, we carry those things for a long time. And if we're carrying things from our experience, and our mother's experience and our experience where we fall in the, um, um, as far as the children, mm-hmm. our, order, our um, birth order, birth order. Um, and, we can, and we're bringing things in from our, our father's family and mm-hmm. whatever they felt about them. So I was like, my father, on his side, they're dark skinned. Mm-hmm. And um, I, but, they're, but my siblings are 20 years older than me, so I didn't grow up with them. I'm gotcha. sure I'd have a totally different self image if I had. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that would have just been an interesting dynamic to have both those things play part because my grandmother was very um, highly opinionated. 
<laughs> and so she had her idea of what pretty was. And, you right. know, she kept it. She had her own style. And she kept it, <clears throat> kept it classy. When she stepped out, she had her little thing going together, on. Right. It was together. Right. It was together. <laughs> and so my mom was the same way. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's funny because we ended up, what I've noticed is that um, I ended up, I'll speak for myself. I ended up overcompensating mm -hmm. for the um, lack of self-esteem. So I ended up putting more emphasis into the image part than I did the underlying things. Right. But we all and do it that. Wasn't a, I don't think on this level. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, even the most confident person, they got there, right? They got there, but there was a process of, of getting there. I'm talking before the confidence. Okay. I'm talking okay. about just a facade. Oh, just the facade. Okay. Yeah, just the facade. Just the, just the looking nice. None mm -hmm. of the feel. None, right. none of the feeling and the sentiments okay. to go with it. None gotcha. of the belief that you know that I was pretty to go with it. Right. Just the just the look. I knew right. how to convince you that I that I felt pretty. Gotcha. Yeah. And but so you didn't now, necessarily feel it. I never. No, not for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, it would be, instead of me feeling pretty, I felt like I did my makeup nice that day or oh, that my hair was nice. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, it was so, never you. It was right. everything else. Right. And it wasn't until I heard someone say, most of the thoughts that we, um, mm -hmm. hear in our own mind aren't our own. Right. And that stayed with me and stayed with me. And I, and so I started rummaging through the thoughts that I have about myself. And so once you start to filter it out, to start to sift the thoughts, and then you only have your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you don't like what you, what you're left with, then you can change it. But it is some work to do that sifting. It's not going to necessarily be comfortable because you might not like what you find. You might not like the fact that someone you love pass down a message to you that wasn't a loving message. Right. Right. Am I so that's answer? getting into that psychological side of that self-esteem mm -hmm. and beauty. Mm -hmm. And that, that goes, oof, you can go deep with that. Oh yeah. You oh, can yeah. go really deep. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's, it's certainly uh, strongly interwoven. So when you see people like come in for um, microblading, is there a typical reason other than I don't have any eyebrows, right? Um, no. No? Mm -mm. Because it's funny because the one, everybody thinks they don't have eyebrows, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all what the you do? eyebrow person people make me sick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know. On the, I used to be jealous of them until I realized that in order to have thick eyebrows, you're probably a generally hairy woman. Anyway, here's anyway. that part. Okay, okay, okay. You, you, just, you just eliminated right. that, whole, that whole situation. I'm good. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so, so most women don't think they have any eyebrows. And then the ones that do have thick eyebrows don't feel that they're perfect. They're not perfect enough because mm -hmm. I got this little space over here or my tails aren't thick enough. And so it's, it's, it's makeup all over again. It's us looking at our face all over again. It's us seeing ourselves um, as needing just a little tweaking mm -hmm. all over again. Mm -hmm. So I know you are, but I just want to ask this for the sake of the video. Are you like affirming these women as you're doing their makeup and doing their brows? Do I know it, you are. Uh, it's, it's a lot, of course I am. <laughs> it's a lot easier. Um, naturally to do it during the makeup process because right. the um, the brow part is, is way more intricate mm -hmm. um, and so it requires a lot more concentration right. but yeah every chance I get um, I'm affirming them and you know telling them that they're beautiful and um, this is just an enhancement I'm not mm -hmm. making you pretty I right. can't make you beautiful but I can right. bring out the work that the creator already did right, I can yeah. help you see it mm -hmm. I can definitely help you see it Right. Yeah. That's so cool. It, when you're out somewhere, I love when sisters compliment each other out. Oh, girl, complete strangers. Yeah. I, I, I get that you're that kind of, <laughs> you're that kind of woman. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't help myself. I even, um, 
went to the Emoja Festival this weekend, mm-hmm. and there was a sister that had locks, but she had them arranged so that in loops, so they looked like petals all over her head, and it was glorious. It was glorious. I, bet so I had to go up beautiful. to her. It was so beautiful. It was so <laughs> unique. Too. I know, yeah. and so I had to go compliment her. And then when I did, she saw I had my son, and it turned into this whole thing where mm-hmm. she showed me how to carry my baby on my back. Like using the cloth? Uh-oh, I lost you, Lita. Sorry about that. I was getting a call and interrupting my connection. Did you, okay. what did you, what's the last part you caught? I said, she sh- you said she showed you how to carry your baby, and I asked with the cloth? Yeah, because I, um, I had a head wrap on, and she had her baby with her, and one thing led to another, and the conversation <laughs> flowed, and she showed me how to put my baby on my back, which oh, I've wow. always wanted to learn how to do. Wow. Just from us building each other up. And then the funny, the kicker is that my sister was at the festival, my mm-hmm. older sister, and I walked past her um, later on, and the two of them are talking. They knew each other. Wow, yeah, six degrees of separation, right? <laughs> always, always. And I just, I thought that was just a really beautiful moment. Her and her best friend took as long as it took. They stopped what they were doing and they helped me get my baby tied and secured to the point that I walked away. And now I know how to do that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And so that's going to be a part of what you're teaching with the head wraps? It is. It is. And I can't wait. I can't wait. I, those, I love those moments. And I, and I just, I want all of us to get to the point where that's our everyday life. We have a right. lot to share with each other. We have a lot we can learn from each other. We do. We do. We really do. I won't be like carrying that. any babies, but um, my baby's 26, <laughs> so that will be awkward. He's about 6'4". <laughs> that will be really awkward. It'll <laughs> be good for your quads, though. That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so cool that is something that I've always wanted to learn and just from like you being open and complimenting somebody you learned something that you've wanted to learn for a long time and now you can use it and help teach other women how to do that that's pretty yes. cool yes. we yes. never know the opportunities that we're creating by just speaking to people totally. and complimenting the beauty that we see in them totally totally mm-hmm 